So I wanted to talk about the Gibson GA18 Explorer. Um, it was introduced into the catalogue in 1959. Um, the line of amps now are coming in with Tweed Tolex, a gold uh, Flying V logo and the Oxblood grill cloths. The uh, cabinets themselves have also changed to be more box-like. Uh, prior to this, Gibson were producing tapered cabinets. Um, now, in 1959, we're seeing, again, square box cabinets with a slanted baffle. Uh, in this particular amp, we see a 10-inch speaker. The speaker of choice is a Jensen P10R with a ribbed cone. Um, it has three inputs. It has a volume, a tone, and a depth and a frequency. Uh, for the tremolo, uh, we have a, um, a foot switch, a mahogany foot switch, which is hardwired into the amp. Uh, it has two 12x7s in the preamp stage, two 6V6 GTs in the power stage, and a 5Y3 GT rectifier. Um, in 1959, the model is GA18. By 1960, Gibson changes this and uh, to add the additional T um, for the tremolo, we start seeing the GA18T Explorer. Um, the tubes that I had in mind, um, that came in mind, uh, my amp was stuck. Um, it basically been put away in a, in a closet for many years, untouched. Um, still had the cigar uh, Astron capacitors in the back. Um, the power tubes were still 1959 uh, RCA smoke glass GTs. Uh, I have seen in 1960 models that Gibson had started using the RCA GTAs, um, the clear glass. Um, the preamp stage, we've got two 12AX7s. Um, prior to this, in V1 of my GA6 and my GA20, in V1 we have 12 AY7s. In the 1959 Explorer, we now start seeing, and again in lots of the Gibson range now, 12 AX7s. This could be, in this particular amp, that um, for amps that have a designated tube for their tremolo, uh, i.e. the Gibson GA20T has a 6SQ7, um, in this particular amp, the Explorer, um, I'm not sure whether the V1 helps to contribute towards the tremolo stage. So maybe having a higher gain tube in that position might be why they put the 12x7 there. Um, although around this time as well, music was changing, rock and roll was coming in, and maybe it was Gibson's intentions to now start putting 12x7s in their preamp stages for extra gain. Um, prior to this again, back in the day, um, Gibson's choice was to, to put a 12AY7 in their V1s to try and uh, maintain higher clean headroom. Um, by 1959, maybe they decided that wasn't uh, necessarily needed anymore. <laughs> 